Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Glad to see you in church this morning. Glad to see the folks out there in the um, viewing audience. I can't see you, but you can see me. Uh, we're in Luke chapter 18. Let's turn to that and, and very significant chapter. It's actually tomorrow's reading, but I'm re doing it a day ahead of time. Today's is good too, but I, I like tomorrow's better, so I, we ain't having service tomorrow, so I'm going to teach it. Luke 18. And he spake a parable, verse 1, unto them, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. You know, the problem with most folks is they faint and fall out and they're all in distress. They don't pray. Prayer changes things. Now, the prayer that you need to have and you must have in order to be saved is the prayer, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. Forgive me for my wicked, sinful heart. I was talking to someone the other day, and they were telling me how good some people were and, and got mad at me because I said, they ain't none good, no, not one. Someone recently here told me about how they're looking up their family tree, you know. It's okay if you're into that. That doesn't really... You know, I know my people who my mom and daddy and granddaddy was on before that. I don't much care. Did, did you hear about the guy? Uh, he paid $50 uh, to look up his ancestry and his family tree. And then once he got it, he had to pay $500 to cover it up. <laughs> you got, you're going to find everybody got some horse thieves in there and bank robbers and murderers. And uh, you know why? Because the heart of man is desperately wicked. And Everybody's family treat her as wickedness because we're all sinners. <laughs> so that I don't much care about my family tree, really. I know who my daddy was and my mom and one. Someone told me about this. They said, they said this. They got to. They said somebody they knew. A lot of people are into this now, especially with this DNA because they got DNA now, you know. And and uh, they said the two did sister and brother. They, they had the thing looked up, and uh, the sister and brother, uh, when they looked it up, the family tree with this DNA thing, they found out they had different daddies. Mama was fooling around. Now, 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 now I think they'd be better off if they never knew that. Don't you think so? I mean, I mean I'd mean, i rather never know that. I know I had a godly mother was a Christian, but... Uh, and I don't know, we all think very good about our mothers, but uh, I mean, I wouldn't like to after I'm grown up and had my own kids look back and, 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 and see that my mama was sleeping around and my brother ain't really my brother. <laughs> I don't know if you're a lawyer or what, but this, but I'll tell you what, this DNA really nails some people. It's got a lot of people playing child support these days. <laughs> because you know, what they used to do, Mama never say nothing, Daddy never say nothing, and they just go on the go on the county, and the government pay for it. But now they nail you with the DNA, amen. Yeah. <laughs> and then you pay, you play, you pay. <laughs> okay, let's get to the verse two. Saying there was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. That's a, I wouldn't want to see that judge. There's judges like that. They don't believe in God. They don't care what they do. They're just nasty judges. Verse 3. This is Jesus speaking now, you know. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Verse 4. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man. He, 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 the judge even said it. I don't believe in God. I don't care who you are. I've got, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you get, you put people in authority like a judge that are wicked people, they could do some terrible things. They can, they can harm people. And a lot of them, you know what they do? They're getting money under the table. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, plenty of that. Plenty of crooked judge. There ain't nothing, there. No, ain't nothing new under the sun, is there? And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Oh, no, no, I, I, I skipped it. Verse 5. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, least by her continual coming she weary me. She kept coming back. She's driving this judge nuts. And he says, 
Man, he didn't care about God. He didn't care about her situation or not. But she, she, he didn't want to be bothered. So he said, okay, okay, all right. You can have what you want. <laughs> because what? He kept doing what? Uh, you know what the world says? Remember this old saying? You might use it today. Uh, the, the squeaky wheel gets to grease. <laughs> You know, you know the people that get stuff in this world, they just yep, 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 yep. Oh, they keep bothering you, bothering you. But that's like sometimes people come and ask me for something. I say, okay, yeah, well, then it, it, did you, did you get that or whatever? You know, some they weren't asking me for a bad thing, but some but they might ask me for it, and and I just kind of I was kind of busy and I just forgot about it. And they never thought no more about it. But then someone else they asked me about it 15 minutes later. Then they asked me about it again, another 50. Okay, okay. <laughs> huh? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe you're one of those people that. <laughs> like a little kid Like the kid. My kids that bothered me for stuff, they got more stuff. You know? Isn't that the truth? We don't bother. But listen, God is different. You know, God is different than, than this wicked world. Let me tell you about that. It says, uh, uh, and the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Verse 7, Jesus speaking. And shall not God avenge his own elect? That's saved people. Saved people. Elect means saved people. It don't mean that, like a lot of false teachers do. I know some people. Some people ought to know better. I'm very upset with them because they, they believe in this godless her, her, heresy doctrine of election that God elected some people to go to heaven and some to hell. Well, the only ones he elected for heaven are those that would repent and choose Jesus and be saved. But but they don't say that. They say that you can't do nothing about getting saved and if you're going to go to hell and, and God has in his, in his, they say, in his providence, he has elected millions more to go to hell than he is heaven. I don't want that kind of God. That ain't my kind of God. I want a God that not willing any should perish, which he is. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. If you go to hell, you know, if you're sitting in church here, if you go to hell, it's on your part. It ain't God's part. You're going to go to hell because you reject the Savior. And you love your sin and you're going to live in it. Watch out. Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, save people, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you, look at verse 8. This is very important. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. It means that if you come to God and ask him something as his child, as a born-again Christian, he'll answer you speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, the Son of Man, that's he, he's talking about himself, capital S. That's the, Jesus Christ. The Son of Man is Jesus Christ. He's talking about himself here. Shall he find faith on the earth? You see, there's not much faith. And you know, a lot of people that are saved, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a whole bunch of people that are saved, but they don't have enough faith to pray. And I hope you're saved today. If you are, why don't you just have some faith and get some stuff from God? Now, here's what you don't want to hear. You say, I'm, I know I'm a Christian, but God don't answer my prayers. Let me tell you why he doesn't. In fact, not only doesn't he answer your prayer, you know what he does with you? He laughs at you. Laughs at you as his child. You know why he laughs at you? Because in Proverbs 1 it says, Ye would none of my reproof. That means you wouldn't listen to the Bible and do what God said and you're living in sin. And then you want to come to God and ask him. You know what he's going to do at you? Laugh at you. <laughs> David, why should I? I, I, I got all this in the Bible. You know the preacher preaches it and you keep living in sin. Why are you going to bother me? I, I'll laugh at you. Go on back home. <laughs> Not only did David... I just said if David, I don't know if he, only he knows if he's living in sin. Only I know if I'm living. He can see, he'll say it to me too. He'll say it to anybody that's saved. If you're consciously living in sin and practicing sin, 
God's going to laugh at you. He's going to get your prayers answered. Watch out. Watch out, Internet. You know, I hear it every day of my life. People tell me, well, Pastor, everybody sins. And the grace of God, grace of God, God is gracious, God is merciful, and God is judgmental too. And if you think you're going to not listen to the word of God and live in sin and call upon God to answer your prayer, he goes, ha, 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 I laugh at you. He says, I don't like it. Straighten up, David. Straighten up, Joanne. Straighten up, Donnie. Straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, Pastor Varga. You want my blessing and, and you want to come uh, to me and ask me and I'll, I'll answer you quickly. Get your act together. And if you're saved, the Holy Ghost can keep you from sin. There are no, there are no uh, temptation taking you, but it's common to man. And God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able. But with temptation, make a way that you may escape. So that's it. Yeah. No faith. All right. Main part of the sermon. Verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. See, mankind in general, they're, they're, they're self-sufficient and they're proud and arrogant. And they think they're better than others. Trust in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. You know, there's people that think they're better than others. The people I minister to are homeless people, and that's my life. It's been my life for 50 years. I love it. I wouldn't do anything else. But there's a lot of churches and a lot of so-called, I don't know if they're Christians or not, they won't have nothing to do with homeless people. I'll tell you why, because they won't only let them in their church because they think they're better. You ain't no better than anybody. Ground is level at the foot of the cross. You ain't no better than a crack whore turning tricks out here on the street. What are you calling me like? No, because you're a sinner just like anybody else. Amen. He's all like you're using that language. Well, that, that, it, I'm doing the preaching. I'm using the language I want. I mean, uh, that um, you Pharisee, you do good or think you're better than other. You ain't no better than a crack whore. You're no better than a pimp. You're no better than a murderer. You're no better than Hitler. You're no better than Saddam Hussein. Name the vilest person you ever heard of. We're all sinners just like them. You need to get right with God. Pharisees like this one here. God makes God throw up. Despise others. Now here's the story. Jesus telling it. I like it. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, that's a self-righteous one, and the other a publican. Not a Republican, but a publican. <laughs> he might be a Republican. He might be a Democrat. I don't know. Ain't, ain't neither one of them worth a hill of beans, really. <laughs> These politicians are all crooked. Do you know that? Politicians are all crooked. I don't care. You might say, oh, my Republican. Oh, my. No, no. They're a bunch of crooks. They're a bunch of money grabbers. That Washington, D.C. ain't nothing but a cesspool. It's called the swamp, and that's what it is. Democrats, Republicans, Independents, the whole mess. <laughs> Verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. He's praying with himself. He wasn't with God. God, I thank thee. Oh, listen to this. I thank thee that I am not as other men. Oh. Man, it don't just make you throw up. Huh. I'm not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this publican. You know what a publican is? Tax collector. Crooked tax collector. You know them crooked tax collectors? They do it today, too. I don't know how much they do it. It'll always be done. But back in that day, uh, uh, if he was a tax collector, um, the, the government told you how much that, that they need, need, they wanted to get for them. 
Anything you get up and above that, that's okay. That's yours. That's that's the way they used to deal. And they would really hose you, man. They, 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 they'd rip you off. They were hated. Publicans were hated. Tax collectors were hated. He said, I'm not like these adulterers. He probably watched... He probably wasn't openly had no girlfriend, but he probably watched pornography on the internet. They didn't have no internet then, but he stuck around. You know what I mean? He 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 had his little he had his little penthouse magazine hid away in a cave. You know, I'm not an adulterer. You just hide it, dirty old man. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. He, give tithe not only a tithe is 10 percent he give tithes he give 20 percent maybe 30 percent and the publican standing afar off he was ashamed we need to be ashamed as sinners you never get ashamed as a sinner you never get saved would not lift up so much as his eyes on the heaven but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what God's looking for. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Every one of us. There's none righteous, no, not one. Everybody's a sinner. Someone was bragging to me about how wonderful someone else was that they're perfect and everything. Oh, shut up. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody perfect. We're all sinners. The heart of man is desperately wicked. So get off your high horse. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. You know what it means to be justified? Just as if I've never sinned. Glory to God. That's me. April 4th, 1969, I got justified. I knelt down at my couch, 19310 Glenwood Lane, New Berlin, Wisconsin. I called upon the Lord and I was justified. And I've been justified every second since. You say you've been perfect? No, sir. No, ma'am, I haven't been perfect, but I'm justified. My sins are forgiven. Glory to God. Rather than the other, for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased. You want to brag about how good you are and what a righteous person you are? You're going to hell. Quickly. Proud and arrogant. You're no better than anybody. Shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Now, isn't that a good story? Is it so, it's so clear. The self-righteous go to hell and the penitent sinners go to heaven. Humble yourself. I just prayed with something, a good friend of mine on the phone. He had a lot of health issues and, and we prayed with each other just, just before I come up to preach. And he prayed for humility for him and me and for every, every Christian. Humble. Humility is where it's at. Big shot, arrogant, Pharisee people go to hell. And if you are a Christian and you act that way, you ain't getting no blessing. God will laugh at you. Yeah. Oh, and God, listen to me. We're going to have revival here at Daytona Beach in this church. Because I'm going to keep my heart right with God. And I hope you will too. And then we can see revival. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but you're going to have to confess your sin. You're going to have to come an all fashioned altar whether it's here in church or in your home, wherever you are. The Pharisee, righteous man, self-righteous man went to hell. And the penitent sinner went to heaven. Isn't that good? Glory. Glory to God. Let's pray. Lord, I'm thankful I... Repented my sins April 4th, 1969. Maybe there's someone in church today or out there in the viewing audience and they've been saved. I've been saved. I'm washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, justified through the power of his resurrection. You know if you're saved or not here in church or out in the viewing audience. If you're not and the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, why don't you repent of your sins right now and get saved? This is a prayer. This is a prayer. Get saved right now. Pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. Shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, 
uh, turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Amen. Amen.